Now, they then say, and this, this requires a bit of thought, they then say, hence, show that the seventh coefficient is the greatest one. Um, how many coefficients are there going to be in this expansion, by the way? There will be 13, right? There will be the 12 and then the zeroth one, which is 13 of them. So of the 13 coefficients, the seventh one, is that the middle one? I think. In this case, it actually is, right? And why is that? Well, this 2 and this 3, they're not very different. Did you notice up here I had to make these numbers quite different in order to change where the greatest coefficient will be? So this is kind of nice. It's still going to be in the middle. But how do I show that it will be in the middle? Well, I need a bit more space to show this, but let me see, what will I wipe off? I'm going to write all of these. Okay, I need to point at something up here. You've already got this and you're working. I want to point it out and then I'm going, to, um, I'm going to rub it off so that we can actually do the working, okay? I want you to have a look at the coefficients, the, um, the T sub Ks for all of these, okay? So pay close attention to this next bit because the piece of logic that you need is very simple, but if you don't get it, then the next is just going to be algebra soup for no reason, okay? So what I want you to observe is, one way of working out the greatest coefficient is just to work out all the coefficients, right? If you work them all out, then you can clearly see, oh, that's the biggest one, right? That's the biggest one. And then you can just eyeball it and say, I know which one it is, okay? But we know how tremendously inefficient, without even starting, we know that's not a good idea. If you've got lots and lots of terms, this is gonna be a very time consuming way to go about things, okay? So what would be a way of being able to work out faster that, that one of them is the biggest one, okay? Well, do you notice, right? Uh, let's have a look at the original situation. They get bigger and bigger and bigger. You, you hit your maximum, right? And then after that, they get smaller and smaller. Does this make sense? Uh, in fact, even for these two, where I've changed where the greatest coefficient happens, this still occurs, right? They get bigger and bigger until you hit a maximum. And then after that, smaller, smaller, smaller. Here, you hit the biggest one straight away, and then they, they subsequently get smaller. Okay, so in other words, what I want is, I want to find out at some point, well, from the start, as you advance to the next term, you will be bigger than the previous term, right? For example here, uh, if we call this, this is T0, T1, T2, T3, T4. Okay, I can write of this first line, and maybe you want to write this with me as well, right? For this first line, I can say T0 is smaller than T1, and that's smaller than T2. But then at that point, right, this is T2 right in the middle. I know it's a bit funny because you start counting from zero, right? But that's T2. After that, it, it doesn't get bigger anymore. So T2 is bigger than T3, which is bigger than T4. Does this make sense? Right? Uh, in this case here, T0 is smaller than T1, you get bigger, but then after that, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Does this make sense? And you don't need me to write this one, T0 will be the very biggest one and everything else is smaller. Okay? So what I'm trying to find is, if I can say this, right? At, for, for many values of k, this will be true, but at a certain value of k, it stops, right? The next term is no longer bigger than the term before it. And once you hit that point, if you can solve this, then you have found the greatest coefficient. Does that make sense? If I can find all the places where this is true, then that means the next one will be bigger, the next one will be bigger, the next one will be bigger. If it is not true, you're no longer getting bigger, you've passed the greatest coefficient. Does that make sense? So this is the thing I want to solve. This is the inequality, right? Now can you see why therefore we spent part A finding expressions for this and this, right? Because these are going to feed into my inequality, okay? Now the last thing I want to point out is before we actually start to do this, have a look at t sub k and t sub k plus one, okay? I just have a look at those expressions. Uh, because they were built off of the same, ex the, this formula up here, this one, right? Do you see how much they have in common? They have a lot in common, right? For example, the 12 factorials, they're just identical, right? Um, these factorials down the bottom, they are very, very similar to each other. They're only off by one, like these guys, right? And then these two bits on the end here, right? The number of twos and the number of threes, they are very similar. Again, they are only off by one, okay? So while I can solve this, it might make a little more sense 
to solve this. Just think about this with me, okay? If you look at these two guys here, do you agree that they are equivalent inequalities? That's a weird phrase to say, <laughs> equivalent inequalities. You're, you're solving the same thing here, right? Assuming that we're working with positive coefficients. Now, the reason why I like this better than this, it's a bit weird. We usually try and avoid fractions, don't we? We usually say, as soon as you, go, as soon as you see fractions, multiply through by something to get rid of them. Okay? Can anyone tell me why, looking at these two disastrous looking things, why might fractions be a really, really good idea? Have a think. So here's t, k plus 1, here's t, k. I'm saying put this on the top, put this on the bottom. If you divide this, sorry, if you divide this by this, you're going to have a lot of cancelling, right? Like every single term that you've written will have some form of cancelling. For instance, this 12 factorial and this 12 factorial, what's going to happen to them? Just gone immediately, right? Uh, have a look at this k plus 1 factorial and this k factorial. Out of these two, you're dividing this one, this will be on the numerator, this will be on the den denominator, right? One of them is going to completely vanish. Which one? This one, this one is smaller, yeah? So all of these will go. And all you'll be left with is the very last term in this factorial, just the k plus one part, right? So you can see, you can match up this guy with this guy. You can match up these two, you can match up these two. You can match everything, okay? So this is what I'm going to try and find. I'm gonna find an expression for that. It's gonna take a bit of work to write it the first time, but then once I do, I can just go to town canceling everything and I'll come up with something quite nice and neat, okay? And you can see that's what we've got over there in the question. So I need to wipe things off, but what I want you to do is write down this, this, this fraction here, okay? And then just begin to substitute this whole thing and this whole thing in the numerator, in the denominator, and then we're gonna start canceling together. You gotta to be quite careful when you do it. Okay, so begin by writing that while I make myself some space. So what have I written down? Well, here's t of k plus 1, right down here. And here is t of k, rather than write fractions on fractions because it will become quite messy. I've just written this divided by that, okay? So I've got a big fat division sign so I don't mistake it for a subtraction sign. And then I want you to have a look. You'll notice that I have underlined a few terms. And I've underlined some very specific ones, okay? Uh, firstly, before I explain that, you'll notice that the 12 factorial here and the 12 factorial here, they're just going to disappear in my next line. Are you okay with that? I'm just going to cancel them straight out, okay? But now I want you to notice why I've underlined these four terms in particular, right? Do you remember I mentioned that everything is going to pair up? So you've got, after your 12 factorials are done, okay, you've got one, two, three, four terms on the left that are going to match up with one, two, three, four terms on the right, okay? But what I've underlined in each case is that depending on which term you're looking at, one of the terms will be bigger. Let me say that again, right? Depending on which terms you are matching up, one of the terms in the pair will always be bigger than the other one, okay? So for example, if we go through this in order, right? You've got two to the power of 11 minus k. And what it matches up with is two to the power of 12 minus k. Now, which one of those is bigger? Well, this one is bigger because there are 12 lots of 2 being multiplied. This one only has 11, okay? So therefore, all of these terms, every single one of the 2's in here, however many there are, they will all disappear in a minute. They will all be cancelled out. How many will be left over here? One. Exactly one, okay? Um, if you have a look at the same way, over here and here, these are the 3's, and they are going to pair up. Which one of them is bigger? Well, this one is bigger because it has exactly one more three than this guy. Does this make sense? So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to do this same kind of like highlight for yourself. Where am I going to have the terms that are remaining? Because everything else is going to cancel out, right? So now I'm going to begin. You can see that I've already, I'm not going to write my 12 factorial, okay? Um, I, I see here, right, out of these two terms, here's a big fraction, divide, Here's a big fraction. This one is all going to disappear, which leaves me just with two from there. Does that make sense? Like everything else from the twos will go, okay? Then I, I progress over, what about the threes? Well, all of these threes will cancel, leaving you with just one three over here. Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna write three. 
I'm done with my numerator. See, it, it looks bad, but if you patiently go through it and use some color to help yourself, it's not that hard to work out what's what. This k plus one factorial, it's going to cancel, because it's bigger than this one, with almost, well, with every term from here, but what will be left behind? Just the, the biggest part, which is just k plus one. And then you finish out over here, because all of these terms from this factorial will disappear, only leaving you with the biggest term from this one. What is the biggest term in this whole factorial? It's going to be the, the last term along, right? 12 minus k. So I'm going to write 12 minus k. There you go. Looked like a bit of a dog's breakfast when we started, right? But the point of dividing these is because we know in advance they will cancel out and leave us with something neat, okay? So now that I've actually done my cancelling, I'm going to, you know, multiply, take the reciprocal. You can see I end up with this and this. Look at the question. Does that look familiar to you? Are you happy? So in a large number of cases, they will give you this result because they really want you to get to the next part. But sometimes they won't, and it's up to you to be able to work out this part on your own. So you have to be quite careful with the way that you set out your algebra. Okay.